In today's video, we are going to review Chelsea 6, Wolves 2. What a result for Chelsea. We're going to get into the tactical analysis of this video. I'm recording this straight after the game, so there might be a few things that I miss, but I'm going to try and get the video out ASAP. Go over to my Twitter if, at the end of the video, you've got any questions, and I'm going to try and address as much on Twitter after this as I can with a thread. But, like I say, I've got a live little analysis bit coming for you here now. What in for Chelsea and Jao Felix on his return. How much better can it get? Okay, welcome to the analysis part of the video. What a game that was. 6-2 win for Chelsea. We're going to quickly talk about the first half and then talk a lot more about the second half because it was much better to see. Um, I'm going to try and flash some things up on screen in terms of stats and uh, pictures of the actual game to help me with this because I'm recording this part of the video straight after the game as I've got to get off and get some stuff done. So I'm going to record this quickly and then like I say, I'm going to try and get the edit to sort of show other parts of the game and put the images in as and where we need them. So hopefully that will help. This is the starting lineup that we saw. Um, no Labia in the team. I did speak about that uh, on Twitter. Unfortunately, apparently the injury is not too serious. And that's good because especially in that first half, I did think a lot of the issues sprouted from Casado. I think he struggled. I think he was quite slow in build-up. Um, I think there was a few times where we sort of turned the ball over as Gusto was inverting. And it was sort of during the sort of transitional phase and then we'd lose the ball and then he'd have a lot of space to cover on his own and that was very apparent especially with again in the first half when it was a lot more higher tempo very back and forth so I think that had a big part to play in the game and I think that's something we haven't really struggled as much with with Lavia and I do think that's partly to do with Lavia looking a little bit sharper at the minute due to the minutes he's had um then like I said we, get, we finally got saw Palmer in the eight which I was happy with Madawake out wide, absolutely phenomenal. Um, he did give away that second, the free kick to sort of lead to that second goal. We're going to get it out of the way now. Defensive set pieces, I'm going to just put it out there. It's the first poor thing of the game, so let's get it out there and let's just, just address it. We were poor from defensive set pieces. We were seconds pretty much every ball and we just looked switched off until the ball had sort of made contact. We almost looked like we didn't switch on until the second ball and by the time we did, we were too late. Kawave's got a lot of work to do in that sense. I'm not overly worried about it, though, but it is something to be addressed. The second goal was from a set piece, and we looked in danger from those set pieces before that goal, and then even in the second half, probably their best chance in the second half came from a set piece as well. So important to address that, because that is the two biggest negatives for me from this game, and I'll get them out of the way so we can get onto the positives, because I think that's more fun to talk about in this video. And again, I'll try and, on Twitter, I'll put out some threads and things about what did tactically go wrong in the first half, so if you want that content head over to the Twitter account, um, which is linked with my YouTube channel, I'm pretty sure. But set pieces, defensive set pieces need addressing. And the second thing was, what was the second thing? It was the tempo and controlling the tempo. Like I say, Casado looked a little bit off the pace. Um, and I think we just, we was playing it too fast at times to the point where we wasn't able to get into the structure that we wanted to get into and we'd often find ourselves sort of between the two structures too often which is a problem when you're in playing this positional style of play you want to find yourself in this structure on screen as often and as fluently as possible so the movement part of the system you want to be sort of quick fluid and crisp you don't want it to be you don't want to lose the ball during that fluid sort of transitional spot because that's when you can open up gaps when things are happening here open up a gap there for example so again when you're playing a higher tempo you sort of lose that opportunity to get into that structure in a crisper manner whereas today in the second half we saw that a lot more fluid a lot not even fluid to word but a lot crisper in terms of how quickly we was getting into shape how we were sustaining play we was controlling the tempo Second half was all Chelsea in terms of controlling the game. The the one or two chances they did have were mistakes. Again, uh, passing out from the back, one of them near the end from Jujby Hall and a set piece. Essentially all the ones I can remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, the shape was so much better. Second half, big positive. So now let's talk about individual performances. Like I say, in the first half, I'll just run through a few of the notes I had. Palmer's finish in the first half, unbelievable. Just the composure he has to finish like that is just so... just. Unbelievable class. Defending set pieces poor, as I said. Gusto slightly off it today as well, and I think he's sort of a little bit more, a little bit better in the second half, but he still looks a tiny bit off. His passing last few games has just been a few, a little bit loose for my liking. But 
not too worrying. So I'm not overly worried about him, uh, especially with the quality that he possesses. Then in the second half, my full-time thoughts, essentially, right, so Madawake, let's talk about him for a minute because, wow, what a performance. Three goals, won the corner instantly from being direct, finding himself in and around the box, getting a shot off, winning the corner. Then after that, so of course from that, we um, get the corner, score the goal, back post Jackson. Then the next chance for Madawake, he pulls one back to Palmer where he could have scored. That could have been an assist for Madawake. And then again, being direct, his one mistake was giving away the free kick for the second goal. But then second half, just every time this combination, again, Madu AK was perfectly positioning himself in an area where Palmer had the last Wolves man on him. And then Palmer could just lay it off, timed his run perfectly, finds himself in the box. One time on his left foot, one time on his right foot. Just perfect for Madu AK. It scores a hat trick and just... You can just see it. And I love it when he's breeding confidence and the arrogance that he sort of plays with. Oh, I love that, that sort of direct nature from Madueke. So that was brilliant to see. Just like I said, excellent from him. Even in the, like, right in the dynamics of the game, tracks back all the way into here, wins the ball back. Again, sort of trickles out of play. But just that work rate, and I said this in pre-season, his defensive work rate has improved. And he's got the athletic frame to be able to do that. Sometimes when he picks the ball up in the midfield, he sort of barges and like protects the ball really well and then spins away into the middle of the pitch. Did that on a few occasions as well today. Brilliant from Madawake. Really, really good. Same for Palmer. Like I said, I've already mentioned it. Just that little combination is just, it worked so well last season towards the back end in the second half of the season. Really good again today. Three assists for Palmer and a goal. He was excellent as well. Just finding spaces. Like I said, I said in the preview, um, dropping into these spots, he can pick up the ball and he was just doing that with such efficiency. But then what he did so well is when Enzo was dropping in more often to create that sort of three, Palmer was the free man because Jackson would sort of move a little bit higher up. Palmer was popping into here to receive. Sometimes he was popping into here. Anywhere he could find, he was just finding the space at every occasion to receive that ball between the lines. And his receiving between the lines today was superb, absolutely superb. The movement to accommodate for it was brilliant. So he was excellent, like I say, with Madawake. Other notes, Jao Felix assist. What can we say? Did it, was it for, right, let me try and get the subs right. So obviously Mudrick went off at half time for Neto, who got the assist for Felix. Again, beautiful cutback for Felix, hammered it home. And that's just amazing to see as well, Felix getting that goal. Um, I love that. that, that made me smile. He also counter-pressed with really good intensity. I'm just trying to figure out who he actually came on for. Was it Palmer? Or Finn? No, yeah. No, Palmer was on the pitch of him at one point. I'm trying to figure out who it was for. Oh, it was Jackson, wasn't it? Because then um, Palmer went up top. By the looks of things, it was a little bit like this. Then, yeah, and then KDH came on a little bit later for Casado. And that's when we also got to sort of Enzo, see Enzo deeper. So we got KDH in there. We finally get to see Enzo in this role, which I actually quite liked as well. I thought we really controlled the game at that point. Vega and Nkunku, again, at one point we got Nkunku up front and Vega, who looked really good in the last few minutes, did a lovely little turn in the middle of the park where he got away from his man. That was brilliant. But again, Felix's goal, Neto, just brilliant. Felix was picking it up between the lines really well as well. And like I say, he was counter-pressing with intensity when he lost the ball on a few occasions. Really worked hard to sort of get in and press alongside the striker, covered back behind Madueke at times. So that was brilliant to see as well, because obviously out of possession was, is more of his um, deficiencies, you'd say, more of the thing that you'd be worried about with him. As I said, Enzo minutes, controlled it brilliantly. He was also really good in the duels today. I don't have the stats up on screen so, uh, to show to speak about, but I'll try and flash them up on screen if they're as good as my eyes were telling me. But his duels, he looks really strong in the duel. One of quite a few first and second balls in the midfield today, especially when, like I say, Casado wasn't quite at it. He had a better second half, Casado, but Enzo, really good in that sense. Controlled the tempo in this half brilliantly. I just think that the main difference was, again, game state helped because we got an early goal from Adaway K and then we sort of took the ascendancy from there rather than sort of allowing it to become a basketball game in the second half and to continue on that sort of swing, back and forth, pendulum action sort of game. But yeah, I just think we slowed it down far better, was finding these like scenarios again into Palmer at the time far more often where you could then release Madueke and then 
the goals just they flurried in and then by the time we sort of hit a little patch of 15 20 minutes of brilliance of finding the back of the net and creating those chances game was out of sight and then we were just having fun with it Enzo was controlling the game people this is like a very sort of people don't like football about this about football I enjoy this but a lot of times where Enzo keep drawing by extent Enzo would recycle the ball even though he has it here and he could play forward but we're we're five two up and he sort of just knock it back into here and we sort of reset like I say said earlier we'd have time to reshape and then we could go again and it just gives you that structure to control that's what I like about Enzo in those roles uh, especially like I say when we had the game state in our advantage so that's the main things I wanted to touch on today like I said I'll try and put up some like little build up pictures on screen to sort of show how we did very similar we had the fullback inverting uh, as I predicted we had the two eights playing high but also dropping into those pockets which again I said would be quite a key figure of this game. And then I loved the fact that we had two 1v1 wingers, Madrid in the first half, Neto in the second half. I thought that that made this game far more dangerous when we actually did find our way into those pockets of space because we played through the middle at times really, really well. And then we finally got that ball into our eights where we wanted to achieve it. Then we'd get it to the 1v1 in this position or this position. And that's where we create from Neto with a cutback for Felix, Madueke with three goals, Madueke almost getting an assist for Palmer. When in the corner, these are where the, the decisive moments can come from. So I think everything in that sense, brilliant. But what a second half. Really do want you guys to let me know what you made of that second half. As I said, this was more of a quick off-the-cuff video, but I just wanted to have a quick speak of what I'm thinking right now. I'll try and get some more videos out during the week. I've got a busy week ahead, so I'm not sure how much I'll be able to get done this week. But streams, no matter what, will return next week with far more consistency. I'll be back to daily as of next week. Um, and like I said, I'll still try and get a few bits of content out. Check my Twitter, I'll still be tweeting loads, and I'll try and get a thread out for this game as well to fully discuss the first and second half and what went differently in both tactically and from a performance standpoint. Let me know what you thought of the game down below. Up the chance. I'll see you guys in the next video.